Medusa fans, and welcome to the Fan Expo HQ virtual experience for the show Lucifer. This is very exciting, not just because this show is a fan favorite, and I'm excited to be talking to the people that we're going to be bringing out shortly, but also we're doing this right on the eve of season five, the first half of season five, coming out on Netflix on August 21st. And I'm going to be your host for the next hour. My name is Aaron Sagers from the Travel Channel show, Paranormal Caught on Camera. And not only do I love the show, uh, I was chatting with some of these guys backstage. They are great. They're ready to go. And before I bring them out, I want to say a thank you. Now, of course, Lucifer fans, you guys have helped keep this show alive. And that just shows the strength of the fan community, of fandom itself. But I also want to say thank you because you guys helped make this live stream possible. And your donations, more than $9,000 worth, have contributed to Feeding America and Food Banks Canada. And those are important and impactful charities. So these live streams are fun and we're happy to be doing them, but it's also for a really good cause. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to bring these guys out here. I'm going to be asking some questions and then I want to hear from you. I want to hear from your questions. You can submit them in the chat room and we'll ask them of the cast. But beyond that, as a reminder, beyond this live stream, there are autographs available. There are private video chats, and there is one-on-one -on -one chats available. So just check out the link that is going to be below, and you can find out how to get those autographs, how to get those vi private video chats, and how to get those video shout-outs, too. I might have to get a video shout-out myself. All right, Lucy Vance, let's do it. Let's bring these awesome actors into the room. First off, I'm a fan of her work long before Lucifer, in fact, and I'm excited to be seeing her return to Lucifer. You know her as Charlotte. You know her as Goddess. We all know and love her as Mom. Put your hands together virtually for Trisha Helfer. Let's bring her on into the feed. Hey, Trisha. Hello. Thanks That's for joining us today virtually. <laughs> um, and, and a spoiler alert, there is a cat that might make a cameo appearance in this live stream. So everybody look out for that. Uh, also, okay, let's keep it going. You know her as Ella Lopez, who is not only super sweet and smart, I also feel like there's a cool edge to this character. And she's got some exciting arcs going on this season. And... Of course, the actor behind Ella is an author, an executive producer. She's a geek like us. Make some noise wherever you are in the world. Make some noise for Amy Garcia. Amy. Hey, hi, everyone. Good to be here. <laughs> I, uh, I'm embarrassed by how spartan my wall is compared to how nerdtastic your wall is. It's like a comic shop exploded in there. I, I want to pick apart all the cool collectibles you have back there. Uh, and, okay, we're going to keep it going. You know him. Know him as God's favorite son. Don't tell Lucifer. Amenadel. Give it up for Mr. D.B. Woodside. D.B., come on into the room. Hey, D.B. How you doing, man? Hey. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Doing great. We're happy to have you here. And uh, okay, we couldn't have a Lucifer it's panel good. without yeah. Detective Douche himself. Uh, he plays Dan Espinoza. And wherever you are in the world, I know I'm going to make some noise. You guys can make some noise as well for Mr. Kevin Alejandro. Kevin, come into the room. What? Where's oh? What's up, people? I had to do it. What's up? Automatically, Kevin gets the gets the win for the best. <laughs> you 
You have a couple minutes to plan the exit, though, at the end. Oh, great. The panel, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Don't do the, the staircase thing. <laughs> Kevin, your shirt's definitely a few buttons lower, just saying, than a little earlier. Did you just say take off my shirt? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, this is a live stream for charity, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> we'll start the bidding. How about that? Um, well, guys. I'm happy to have you here for the Fan HQ virtual experience. Uh, and also just congratulations, not only on season five coming out, but season six. Season six is happening. This is insane. It's happening. Uh, I've got to say, like, um, I've read an article that Amy and DB said that they've known for months, just across the board, how long have you known about this season six renewal, which is a big surprise for all us fans. When did you find out? How long have you known? Um, DB, why don't you start since uh, you went on the record saying you've known for a while? Um, I think what would you say, guys? I think we found out like the, I think the last month. I think it was the last month. So it was it, it was a little strange because I think we were all um, all getting ready. Uh, you know, we had been grieving for for, uh, for months. You know, while we were shooting the show. So um, when we heard that we were only getting uh, uh, one more season, season five, I think it was uh, like a mixture of of joy and and sadness. Um, uh, so I think we we spent the entire season kind of getting ready to say goodbye to the show, and so then to get get the uh, get that shot of uh, uh, Netflix and Warner Brothers wanted wanted to do uh, one more was a bit confusing, but um, but I think it was uh, I mean I can just only speak for me, but it was great news, and uh, and I think everybody was really overjoyed. All right, well. Does anyone want to wait to that? I, I'm, I'm actually curious who had the hardest time keeping this a secret. Like, Kevin, did you uh, did you ever almost let this this news slip out that's like, oh, season six? Every second of the day. Oh my God. I was like, <laughs> I know something you don't know. <laughs> it was difficult. I, th I think you're right, DB. I think, I think it was, oh, I think I might have found out maybe just a little bit later than you did. I, I was... It was um, towards one of the last, I think the, the last episode that I, uh, that we were shooting, I found out that there was, a, it was just a rumor at the time. And I was like, what? Uh, and then the next day it was kind of loosely confirmed. Um, and I had the same feelings of like, whoa, this is real. This is really gonna happen. Um, and, so, and, and and now here we are, hopefully, Hopefully, uh, you know, um, the world will open up in such a position that, that uh, we can get started on it sooner than later. But I, I, it's hard for me to keep secrets, too, especially yeah. when they're good ones. I actually <laughs> found out on set, um, I got a call from our showrunners, Co and Ildi, and they're like, so we have something to tell you. Uh, the end might not be the end. And I'm like, what? And they're like, and don't tell anybody. I'm like, right. So it was especially hard because you know, I was shooting with our amazing team of 200 people and was was told this awesome secret and I couldn't tell anybody. So, yeah, it was, it was a little challenging. I, I could see how that would be really tough for you, Amy. I'm sure you were like, hold on, recording it as they're saying it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it was it was fun, but but we kept it a secret. So. One one thing that is not being kept a secret right now is uh, Trisha's cat's hind quarters right there. It just got a, a, a glimpse of that. <laughs> I know. Right. Right. right when they cut to me, there's going to be like a butt shot right here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fiona is not shy. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is a uh, 2020, guys. This is what we have. To, you know, this is the weird world that we deal with. I mean, keeping that in mind, um, I mean, I, as much as you can say, I don't want us to like spill any beans, but it must be very difficult still on lockdown. Um, any idea on when you might be headed into production? Anything that you can say, or is that still just like locked tight? I'm not sure if I can answer that because um, I, I don't want I don't really, I don't want to be the person to give something away. 
Are we allowed to talk about this? Uh, Amy, Trish, DB? I'm not in season six, so I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead, talk. How do you spoiler, know? Spoiler alert. Season six, Trish, you've been in season six. You don't know. True. I mean, I'm just saying it's a supernatural show, so you never know. Things oh, can well, happen. I'm not start trying to say, I'm just saying we all love Trish. And yeah. Never <laughs> say never. So, well, I okay. Know, so I think, I think what. Um, I know that at one point, mom we has to come back hypothetical for start date. Mom, mom has to come back for season six. I agree. I agree. Uh, we did have a hypothetical uh, start date. I know we wanted to start sometime um, uh, in August, but you know everything got shut down again. So I, I think everyone's just sort of playing it by ear. They, we have goals, and they, they've been pushed a couple of times. Uh, so now we're all just sort of eagerly waiting to to hear that exact that exact time to go back. <clears throat> well, the, the entire industry is in the same situation, right? So it's, yeah. I think everybody's in the same boat. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think they wanted to go back as early as the 17th, but that is no longer like even possible right now. So, yeah. Well, I mean, because of this interesting, strange, weird world that we live in, uh, backstage, as you guys were popping in, there was just this real enthusiasm as you saw one another's faces. During this downtime, During this have have you been keeping up with no. anyone? Have you been doing the Zooms with your fellow cast members? Or is this like literally the first you're seeing each other for uh, for several months? This is the first I'm seeing anybody for, for, for a couple of months. Um, you know, uh, and, and I don't want to take it too down, but it was, it was kind of difficult for me to sort of adjust to what the world is going through right now. Um, so, you know, it was a bit of a reality check and also a really good thing for me to, to realize all the things that I've, that I've pushed, not pushed that I thought I was too busy to do, you know, like garden, you know, like, like things like that, you know, things, things at home. So I've been able to really utilize this time to revisit the things that, that I missed. Yeah. No, and I think that that's I think that's entirely fair to talk about it. It's 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 a global situation and we've all had to adjust in various ways. So I, I think that's a very real and, and relatable comment. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? There's some maybe some of the things that the, that you have been doing during uh, during the the pandemic. Amy, you want to weigh in first? Uh, I've learned to use a power washer. I know uh, my car had cobwebs, so. I have something needed to be done there. Home Depot, I know everyone's name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, like like Kevin, I've taken up a little gardening, but a uh, gardening. But um, like I was saying, uh, you know, to DB, I, I've, I've just been writing, to be honest. I, I've been kind of closing myself in, um, in my little office and just uh, just writing and writing and writing and, um, and trying to kind of, you know, create stories that I didn't have as a kid and uh, resuming with my family and catching up on a lot of movies, but, uh, you know, singing, dancing by myself, uh, <laughs> in quarantine. so that's, that's what's been happening over here. Yeah. Well, you've, you've clearly been doing a good job at it because, uh, basically, uh, Google News has but your name has been popping up a lot in the news alerts as far as executive producing, writing, a lot of stuff going on. It's a congratulations. Bravo, uh, Amy, bravo. Yeah, yeah. Tricia, how about you? What have you what have you been up to during the uh during the quarantine? I think in the beginning I OD on Zoom a little bit. There was uh, a lot of <laughs> close friends' birthday parties, and so we <laughs> We need to have a lot of zooms, and everybody was like, "Ooh, what is this new thing?" We can all do? Between that and uh, and then I, you know, hosted a marathon for, on Sci-Fi for something, and so I was really on the computer a lot on doing interviews and things, and I kind of OD'd a little bit. So after that wound down, and of course, you think you're coming out of the pandemic at that point. So you're like, "Yeah, we'll have a little quiet time and can catch up on some." Binge watching and laying in the sunshine outside in the backyard, and and uh, and then now it's a little long. So I am jealous of the writers here in the group that can spend, spend some time being productive. Um, I'm struggling with that lately, but I'm headed yeah. back to work soon. So Vancouver has started, and my show Van Helsing is is currently in production. So I'm actually headed headed back to film soon. 
which I'm excited yeah. about. Wow, is, 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 will this be the first thing that you will have done during, the, uh, during this whole uh, process, the thing that we're going through? The yeah, to my knowledge, they're the first U.S. Uh, production show that uh, U.S. network uh, sci-fi that, that is going, has gone back to work. They've been back to work for about two weeks, I think, now. Wow. Yeah. And, and your cat's going yeah. back to work, too, right? <laughs> your cat clearly <laughs> needs uh, <laughs> to get back to work. D DB, how about you during the quarantine? What have you been up to? And then I'll add to that. Has, has, as an actor, like, has this time, you know, whereas Amy has been able to find the inspiration to write and really have this creative output, what have you been up to, DB? Have you like have you been itching to go to work? Have you has your creativity kind of taken a dip? What how what what's that energy like for you? Uh, well, first of all, I want to say I'm I'm so sorry. I'm having a hard time hearing everyone, and there's so much static. So I hope you guys are able to hear me. Yeah, uh, and hopefully it's something that we can fix, you know, in between. But um, uh, during. You know, for me, during this time, I've just been uh, staying low key. I think it's really in, um, easy for uh, people that are introverted. Um, uh, I've been working out a lot, uh, writing a lot, like Amy. Um, but uh, more or less, I've just been spending time with with my daughter, um, spending time with uh, close friends and family, and just getting ready to to go back to work, whenever that may be. <laughs> and. Uh, speaking of season five, again, first half of season, season five coming up on uh, August 21st on Netflix. What can we tease about your characters' roles this season? I know probably not a lot, although I've seen you guys have been giving some interviews. Um, Amy, I'll start with you because there was some news about uh, love interest and we definitely saw some Star Trek outfits and, and some photo stills. <laughs> so why don't you set up uh, uh, Ella's character, uh, her arc this season. What do we have potentially going on? Well, Ella is usually in her own lane, doesn't get much boote, doesn't get much action. <laughs> um, you know, she just kind of is such a nerd and has no uh, filter that we just see her as kind of this, you know, dorky. Um, kind of forensic geek. So it's really exciting to see her uh, dig in more into her personal life. And not only that, you know, she's so um, confident in who she is and apologetic about not being the coolest person in the room. So I think it's really exciting to finally see her have a crisis of self. And a big part of that is, um, you know, not wanting to put herself out there for love which I think is a very relatable thing. It's very vulnerable and really scary. Um, so we're gonna get to see Ella's journey outside of work a little more and see how she handles her biggest challenge thus far, which isn't how did this person die, but uh, how do you let yourself fall in love? So that's what that's what season five looks like for Ella. Yeah. Now, I, uh, I want to say to the producer, let's go back to Amy for a second, because not only are all these things happening uh, with her character, uh, she's also a Funko Pop. Um, and Ryan Sander in the chat room points out, so you got a vintage R2-D2, MODOK, Wonder Woman, uh, Superman, and then you actually have a Ella Lopez Funko Pop. Is this, this is what we're seeing? Well, so this is actually fan stuff. Like, like first of all, I just want to commend um, this was done by a fan, which I think oh, was pretty amazing. Get it? A fan awesome. making fan yeah. art. Get it? Get it? Um, and then uh, this is just a doll that someone made and brought to a con. So I, I keep everything they send me. And then this I thought was really sweet. It's a jar of positive things. So like on bad days, they're like, I just want you to have this jar so that if you're feeling down, um, you can just, you know, read something from a fan somewhere in the world. So I want you guys to know that when you give me things, I I keep them and they become part of my inspiration. And if I'm having, you know, we all have rough days and uh, and uh, I just want you guys to know that I'm like, ah, it's a rough one, you know. So so to be surrounded by by the love that you guys uh, give to to us, it, it, it means a lot. So thank you guys. Yeah. It's really, it's really cool that you do that, Amy, because 
you know, coming from the from the, the same perspective as you, um, and I can think of talk. I think I can speak on behalf of, of several of our friends who are actors. We all go through, you know, we all go through difficult times, and we all need a reminder of because sometimes things get so hard. We all need that reminder of, yeah, I have done something. Uh, there might be a lull right now, or there might be a challenge that's facing me. But I think what's important is to surround ourselves with the things that sort of remind us that that we continue to move forward. And when things get hard, we have a reminder that shows you can do it. You have done it. Continue to move forward. And I think it's super cool. And and, and I did the same thing with, with the things with the uh, with the art and, and you know and and the and the fun things that the fans give us. Um, and it's really cool that you that you chose to display that today. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and Kevin, I'm I'll I'll stick with you because set up a little bit about what's going on with Dan this season and also as much as you can tease sort of what that dynamic is like with the the Michael that we're going to be encountering uh in in season 5. Yeah, you, you know, I think the audience uh uh can um just sort of expect Dan to go back to who he was in the beginning, a little more fed up, a little more confused, uh, and um, a little more shut down. Um, uh, I feel like he he's gotten a little bit more introverted this 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 uh, this what was supposed to be the final season um, to really sort of rediscover within himself his place in life and what his purpose is, uh, and not only that, try to figure out what Lucifer's purpose is in life. Um, so. It's it's a lot of, of 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 that sort of lost human that that we all discovered in the beginning, um, and then things you know he he gets light of um, of certain things uh, that start to drive the rest of of his uh, passions throughout the season, um, and uh, yep, that's all I can say. <laughs> it was good. That's good. There are uh, lots of arms in that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> but you got there. You covered it. Did, it. DB, does I, I read that you said in an interview that your character prefers Lucifer to Michael this season. Anything more that you can expand on with that? Why Michael would be sort of less of a uh, less of a, a person that, that Amenadel wants to hang out with? Because Michael's a dick. I mean, let's just be honest. He's just not a very nice guy. Um, <laughs> um, no, listen. I think I, I think with 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 all the stuff that's gone on for the last uh, uh, four or five seasons between Lucifer and Amenadiel, one of the things that that I think that we can honestly say is that that these two brothers have gotten a lot closer now, and there's always been a lot of love there. I just think. Manadiel had a problem with Lucifer because of uh, him being so, uh, as we, as uh, as I say to some of my uh, my people, uh, Lucifer can be a little extra. They can look be a little extra. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that they they found their their rhythm, and um, Michael is I would say an an exaggerated version of maybe uh, the way Lucifer used to be first season. So uh, Manadiel's not. Not a fan of Michael's. He loves him. He's family, but I don't think he's a fan of his. Yeah. And well, Trisha, I don't. I, I don't even know. We, we can't even really touch on uh, on what you're coming back as. However, we saw this photo that definitely was a different uh, look for your character. It looked like sort of 1950s housewife. Uh, it looked good. Um, so. If you can say anything, here's your chance. But if not, the backup question is, what do you think mom has been making in her own universe? So uh, take whichever of those two you want. <laughs> um, I think I can, uh, I'll touch a little on both. I don't know how much um, I can say, although, you know, it, it was put out there in the, the press, that picture and and the, the, the noir, noir episode has not been um you know held held secretive there's been a lot of photos from it so i think i think the fans all know that there's um elements to that episode that are outside of the norm for for lucifer and 
Um, I'm just excited to be back. Uh, I I have said this before, and and I got the okay from one of the writers, so I am playing neither Mom uh, nor Charlotte. So um, it's a small role, but it was just so much fun to come back and and play with the team. And everybody has a little bit of a an alternate in this episode to some extent, um, and all you guys will understand what I mean when I when you see it. I think you're gonna love the episode. Um, Kevin made me laugh in one particular scene so hard, I think I almost beat my pants. Um, Lauren and I were in the scene together and we were laughing so hard. So Kevin, <laughs> kudos to you for that. Um, and I don't know about mom, I haven't put too much thought into it because uh, I always hold out hope that maybe we'd see that at some point, which we won't. But um, uh, I don't know, maybe she's making some, I think she'd have some centaurs around. <laughs> <laughs> I think she might get into some bareback riding on some centaurs. <laughs> <laughs> I, you've uh, just launched like a whole fan that's my, fiction that's my category. Sentence of the entire yeah. fucking yeah. year. That's my quote for twenty twenty. Can I just put in a vote for a goddess Lucifer spinoff alternate world? I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. yeah. Don't I, think I, I'd be alone. I think you just pitched that. I think it could get greenlit easily. It would have to be on like, you know, uh, After Dark, I think maybe. Um, but <laughs> does anyone want to weigh in or who can weigh in on sort of the interactions with Tom taking on this different character? Uh, how has it been? How has the dynamic shifted a little bit? with Tom as Michael, as opposed to Lucifer, anything that you can say about that? You know, I, I know, I know personally, um, just through talking with Tom during the early, uh, the, the beginning uh, stages of his process of trying to do both. And, you know, there, there's always a fear with us as actors who, you know, you create a character that everyone understands and believes, then you have to do a whole other one um, so there was a little bit of fear, but I think Tom handled it like a champion. And I think the audience is going to uh, not be able to see through him at all. I, I think he did an excellent job with, with, with balancing the good and evil. Because we all have good and evil within us. You know, there's, there's an angel here and there's an angel here, right? Which one do you listen to? And I think, I, uh, I think Tom did a really good job of, of, of balancing that on camera for the audience to, to sort of say, ooh, wh who would I go with? You know? Right. DB, you want to weigh in on that? Um, I would agree. Um, I, I I had quite a few scenes with him playing um, uh, playing both guys. Um, first of all, uh, man, is that guy talented? I mean, man, is he talented? And and I think that people are going to be blown away to see him doing two distinctly different characters, um, but that you can tell belong to the same family. Um, I I just thought he did a, a a great job. Um, so I can't wait to see it because uh, 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 some of the stuff, like uh, if, if people can can imagine this, I mean, we're we're watching Tom do both these roles, right? But we haven't seen it. You know, we we haven't seen it. So we're going to be watching it to see how they cut it all together. Um, our first time is going to be um, all of your first time as well. Uh, so it's gonna, it's 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 exciting. Um, um, I can't wait to see it. Uh, I just think he did an absolutely smashing job. Um, I'm most interested in seeing there is um, there's an episode that um, one of our showrunners, uh, Joe Henderson, wrote that is absolutely fantastic, and I think it's something like a, a long family dinner. Um, and I think that's probably all I'm allowed to say. Uh, but it's a long family dinner, and uh, and as some Thanksgiving dinners can go, not that this is Thanksgiving, but as some uh, some family dinners to, uh, can go, it's um it's a little tense, a little awkward, a little uncomfortable, um, but it's brilliant. And you guys are going to get a chance to see Tom playing both characters in a very long scene um, that I think is going to be um, gut wrenching on the one hand. And on the other hand, um, I think it's going to be absolutely fall down hilarious. So I can't wait to see it. 
Yeah. I want to jump in a little bit on that, DB. Um, so I, I, I had the opportunity to direct another episode this season, um, which, um, uh, which I was super honored to get. But that was my first experience with being with, with Tom, playing both characters, and then being on the other side of the camera and, and uh, watching him navigate how to do it. Um, and, it, and it seems to the outside eye, like just an easy thing to do to turn this guy on and turn that guy on and, and do that split. But the process that he went through to shut, to do both characters and shut them off was remarkable. And then to see it on the other end in the editing room and to completely buy it. I mean, there's, there's no greater accolade than Bravo when you can do that for yourself. You know, and I think he truly took it to that next level of like, of, of, of one that's as in, from an actor's perspective, perspective to watch it and go, man, I hope if I ever get that opportunity, I can do it that well. Because he did it, he killed it. Yeah. That dinner scene is like a play. It, it, there's not a lot of action. There's not a lot of movement. It's just like DB was saying, characters around a table. And I think to piggyback on, it's not only heartbreaking and hilarious, but I think it's very relatable. You know, it's like, yeah. I always talk about how these characters are larger than life, but when you see them at a family dinner, that's something we can all relate to, especially during the holidays. And so what's so fun about the season is it's gonna bring these angels and 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 twins and, and celestial creatures. It's gonna ground them because daddy's coming home, you know? So I think what's gonna be so fun is, just to see all these people so relatable and literally being thrown down to earth. And then, yeah, see Tom act with himself in the same frequency, <laughs> which I think, you know, it's pretty challenging to pull off. Yeah. And well, let's dive into some audience questions here, some fan questions. Uh, going to, first off, somebody mentioned the Funko Pop, so we already covered that one, but Jamie Ruby wants to know if there's anything that you've taken from the set, props, clothing, et cetera. This is definitely a this is a fan favorite question. I, I love hearing people ask this because it really shows the connection to the show. Like they want to go grab some stuff from the set as well. So, Trisha, how about we'll start with you? You know, during your role when you thought that your character had died and then died again, was there anything that you may have nicked from the uh, the the set? Now I'm too much of a nice Canadian girl. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I never, I've never stolen and taken anything. So I, I do actually have from Charlotte though, in the third season. I don't know why I have it, but I guess costumes gave it to me. I have one of the dresses that Charlotte wore, and it doesn't fit me anymore. I just put it on the other day, and I was, <laughs> I had a, I was going through a very difficult time during season three uh, filming, and I'd lost a lot of weight, and um. And uh, so it doesn't fit me, so I can't even use it. So I think I'm gonna sell it to charity, but it's a pink. I think I shot it, I, I met, uh, DB, I was with you in the scene, I think, in my office, in Charlotte's office. So, uh, but that's all I have. Maybe I'll keep it. Maybe it's better to keep it. <laughs> okay, you set a high bar for not being a thief on- Yeah, it's on like, set. oh, I'm such a good Canadian girl. I don't know how I got it. It just <laughs> disappeared. Yeah, that's nice. yeah, 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 Trish. Okay, it fell off a truck. These what things about, happen. What about from your other shows, Trish? Like you've been on, you've been like part of such really cool shows that everyone loves. Like, do you do you, do you, do you have anything from like Battlestar or like anything that Ben Helsing even? Or should I, we even say that? I don't have anything from Ben Helsing. I might keep my contacts if I can, my black contacts, so I can freak people out. Yeah. Figure out how to put them in. Um, I have two dresses, like a red dress from, from Battlestar. Um, See, there's, there's, there's a theme here. It's like I have this pink dress from Lucifer, <laughs> got this red dress from Battlestar. Come on. Okay, from, <laughs> a different show. I have a, I have like my uh, stamp, the Texas Ranger stamp. But uh, I will be 100 percent honest. The dress is given to me. So <laughs> okay, I feel like Kevin. I'm a fucking thief, guys. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be up with you. I'm a fucking thief. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, I uh, there's one thing that I do have. I always try to take something small um, from from from, uh, you know, just for my own personal. Like what I was saying earlier, I, I like to like Amy surround myself with memories of things of 
for those moments that are hard of like, oh yeah, I have done it. I can do it, I can still move. So one of the things that I do have um, from our show Lucifer is uh, I, I want to say it was season two, we were still in Vancouver, and uh, there was an episode where um, Scarlett was supposed to have made this little uh, bobblehead for her dad, but it never, we couldn't get it in on time uh, for the episode, so they changed it up a little bit. Um, it came the next day, and then for the rest of the seasons, all through Vancouver uh, and every other season, uh, it sits on my desk and it's like a little bo uh, bobblehead that says Dan Espinosa on it. And I stole it. <laughs> you should and have. you're confessing it. You're confessing on a live stream. It. It's, like, it. it's, uh, it's, it's on my bedside table. Video, video documentation. Oh, yeah, I am a douche. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Amy, how about you? Are you are you a thief? Are you are you on the Trisha side or the Kevin side? <laughs> this jacket, I cannot <laughs> confirm or <you're> deny. <laughs> or may not be Ella Lopez's jacket, but unlike Kevin, I cannot confirm nor deny. <laughs> Yeah, he just blatantly admitted to it on you know on, I can't like, video evidence. <laughs> my word, how about my you, TV? I cannot lie. <laughs> Listen, I don't know why all these people are admitting what they stole. You're not going to get that out of me. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't. I don't understand this question. <laughs> I, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, if some item happened to disappear at the end of every uh, show that I do, I, I, you should talk to somebody else. Uh, like, I would never go on record. <laughs> Nicely played. I I now see where each of you fit in like the heist movie. Kevin, you're the worst because not only are you the blatant thief, but you brought down Trisha with you. She was she was just being cool and not admitting to anything, and you got her to like break. You did. Yeah, I'm great. I'm good at I'm good at things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, someone wants to know. Actually, this is a fun question from Lucifer TV fan. What about a Lucifer musical? Would you like to do a song and dance episode or even hell, even do it live? Is there is there a musical Lucifer in the future? You want to do that? Trisha says no. <laughs> no. I would love to. That's all I'm going to say. I can't sing, so um I'll I'd watch from the sidelines. <laughs> Well, okay. well, what do you what do you think either uh, Charlotte or Goddess's song would be if 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 you know let's say you're giving you a pass? People are strange. What would be like, say again. People are strange. People are strange. Oh, good. Okay. Good Amy, what were you gonna say? People are when you're a stranger. Wait, that one. Yeah, yeah, the doors. Yeah. I think that would suit. Um, I was just going to say, I was at Kevin's first dance rehearsal for our music ep musical episode. And he was surrounded by like, what was it, like 10 or 15 professional dancers? Maybe more. It's maybe like 20. 17 to 18. Okay. 18 <laughs> professional dancers. And Kevin was like, you know how you dance and then you give it a little extra pizzazz? <laughs> like, that was Kevin. Kevin... Um, well, Kevin, I think, were you a professional dancer or am I making this up? Is that DB? I can't keep track. Were you both professional dancers? We were, yeah, both, right? we were both professional dancers in the same club. No, like Christian and I believe, you know, believe that they lie. Um, no, but but I, I, I may, that. I may or may not have done a little bit of ballet in college. Yeah, and you may or may not, I don't want to throw DB under the, but you may or may not find DB with a little hat doing a little number on a particular TV show back in the day. But we do have a, <laughs> we do have a musical episode. And, um, and so we all kind of had to sing and dance. Some were more excited than others, but um, but you will see a musical episode in season five. And I did hear that DB crushed it. 
That's what I'm saying. And Amy was okay. Amy sings in I was lucky enough to be teaching the musical number of Kevin's that, that Amy was just talking about. Kevin is brilliant. You guys are going to love what Kevin does. I think he has one of the most fun numbers in that musical uh, episode. I mean, he, you killed, dude. You killed. I got lucky, so, man. I can't wait to see everybody. Me too. I think we all, it was an opportunity for all of us to just sort of let loose and let the, that, that inner, the inner kid in us just sort of shine, you know, because sometimes our, our show deals with, I know not only is it very funny, but also deals with, you know, sort of heavy, heavy situations at times. And this was an opportunity for all of us to just go, wow, this is what we love about what we do. Let us, let us, let us play. And, and we all got to do it. And, you know, I, th I think we all kind of surprised ourselves in a way of like, wow, yes, this is what it's about. You know? Hey, Kev, can you take a shot of tequila before your recording session? You know how they offered it to everyone? They're like, you want tequila? You want tequila? Did, no, you, I, did you take it? Oh, they no, didn't offer you? No. But I will right now. <laughs> Oops. Well, while you're doing that, DB, we've got a question for you from the audience. And they actually want to know if you have, they're doing a push-up challenge right now. And would love to know if you have any workout tips. Don't do it. <laughs> what? What's this? Any workout tips? Any workout tips? Sorry, yeah. Was, was 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 that the question? Yeah, that is because they are they they want some workout tips. Want some workout tips? Um, I find uh, uh, the best thing to do. Um, is to try and get moving. Just, just uh, you know, everyone is, is is pressed for time, right? But you can always find time to just move, uh, whether it's walking with your wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, whether it's walking your dog, um, just get outside and, and move. It's not like any of us have anything to do now anyway. <laughs> um, so I think it's important to just get outside every single day, um, you don't have to belong to a gym. You don't have to have some big expensive treadmill. You can always walk outside. And uh, I think that's the best thing for you. Go for a 30, 40 minute walk every single day and uh, you will see changes. And a small thing that uh, people, that doesn't get uh, a lot of attention. I, it, this is gonna sound strange, but it's so simple. Just drink water. It's crazy, but if uh, people stay hydrated um, you lose weight and you stay in shape. You don't have to worry as much about what you're eating. You don't have to worry how hard you're working out. Just simply by trying to uh, drink anywhere from two to four liters of water a day. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Yes, you will be running to the uh, loo uh, a little bit more for the first week, but your body adjusts to it. Um, your body will adjust to all that water and uh, you'll be fine. So. It's really just about increasing your water intake and just getting outside and uh, enjoying life. Well said. Here, here. We we have a question from Catherine Q who wants to know if you could play a dual ro role, what would the character be? A goodie or a baddie? So if you're taking on another role within the show, good guy, bad guy, what do you want to take on? Um, I would take on a baddie. Batty? Why? Batty for me. Baddies are always so much fun. I started out my career, early in my career, I started out only, mostly playing the baddie. And then all of a sudden people thought I was a goodie. Uh, and I always had, I, I had fun all the way around, all the way across the board. But to find, to be able to tap into your inner bad guy, uh, it's pretty fun. Batty. Yeah. Amy, how about you? Um, baddie, come on. You're a baddie. I don't know. I, I want to I see play somebody really bad. I want to see yeah, I, I, I enjoy it. I do really enjoy 
Yeah, I do enjoy just being like straight down the middle. What you see is what you get. No mystery. I'm probably not going to be winning an Oscar, but you know, I just—I don't know. I, I, I do correspond. I do. I do. Uh, I'm, I'm drawn to lighthearted characters who are, are I think, more more comedic. And and this season, uh, it really scares me because I I had to go out of that comfort zone and and uh, and kill all my funny bones for uh, a particular episode. Actually, Kevin's episode. He was a fantastic director. Amy, so Amy, Amy should win an Emmy this season. <laughs> I'm not fucking kidding, guys. Like, the shit that she does. <laughs> Star. Anyways, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, my God. I, <laughs> he, never, he never says stuff like that. You know? Uh, well, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, Kevin, It. it's like... Uh, it's one of those things where when your coworker, am I allowed? Do I, I don't? Do people know DB that you're gonna? Oh yeah, I think they know. <laughs> DB is gonna. They, do they know? Oh god, I'm just not gonna say anything. Okay, so Kevin. Oh, they do. They do know. Yeah. So DB's gonna direct uh, an episode, oh. which is exciting. Oh, did they announce it? Okay, I wasn't sure if you announced it or not. Oh, oh well. Yeah, okay. Congratulations. Okay. So, so it's, you know, it's already vulnerable. I think being an actor, like you want to be in a very safe space, but to be directed by your colleague is like, Oh God, I know you so well. And I work with you and you're my teammate, but now you're going to direct me. And I have to say, Kevin, Kevin knows I'm very, I'm very sensitive. Like a lot of people, you know, like him and Jerm are always messing around with each other and they can take it. I'm, I'm like, you guys, please don't, tell me I suck right before I go out. Like they, you know, and, and, and I told Kevin, please be gentle on me. And he provided such a wonderful environment. He was an incredible leader. Um, the crew had his back. The crew, you know, respect is something that you earn. You know, you can't just say like, respect me. Like you have to earn it. And and what I love is that the crew just kind of stepped up and, and, and he just led that ship. And the episode was so good that I think it's one of our longest episodes of the season. And and he made everyone feel so comfortable. And there was a lot of changes in the scheduling for various reasons. And Kevin just like spearheaded that ship so beautifully and made me feel so comfortable doing something that was very scary for me. I, I was very vulnerable and it was very different for me on the show when you're a goofball. And so I just wanna say, you know, we have a very multi-hyphenate Team, where they're not just actors, they also have a producer mentality and a directorial mentality, and and I'm just so proud to be part of it. So I I, I can't wait to share with you guys. You're, I, so hats off to just everyone, you know. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Trisha, I want you to respond, weigh in on the goody versus baddie. I mean, certainly throughout your career, you've definitely like done both and and even on this show we've seen these shades of both you know um which do you kind of uh want to gravitate to i usually play baddies um i, I agree with kevin they're just so much fun um so i i mean if i had to choose i would probably choose baddie but it's the the most fun for me is getting to play both or getting to play a character that has flirts the line so you kind of um try and get the audience to you know flip them from thinking you're a baddie or to at least empathize with them harder to do when you're playing you know a, a dracula or something that's just evil they're mm -hmm. fun it's, it's super fun but um yeah i haven't gotten i haven't gotten to play goodies enough um but baddies are just fun they're uh you can you know, it's it's almost like a therapy session. If you're if you if you're at least somewhat good in your own life, it's uh, nice to be able to uh, play bad on screen, and it's almost like a therapy session. <laughs> you work through things and get a bit of frustration out, and you get paid for it. <laughs> you get to vent a little bit. Do you one of my wanna... favorite things about playing baddies is playing him playing the baddie as a goodie. You know, it's like finding finding the good in that person and then watching, realizing how they yeah. grew and became who they were or who yeah. they inevitably become. That's, yeah. that's the cool thing about playing 
that's why it's, you know, we say it's like it's so much fun, but what's so much fun is, is finding who they are when they're a kid first, and then all the elements that created mm-hmm. this perception of, of evilness. Yeah, what made them that way? What yeah. made them do that? Because no, most, most don't think they're bad. Most think they're doing it. Absolutely. <laughs> right. No one's the villain in their own mind. Yeah. Um, DB, did you want to add to that at all? Yeah, I was gonna like piggyback off of something that uh, not everyone was saying, but, uh, but uh, specifically uh, Amy talking about Kevin um, as a director. First, just answer the question. I mean, it's, it's interesting because I I usually have started off on shows playing a character that was really bad, and for some reason he always seems to find himself and then winds up being good. So so I've I've had the opportunity to to play both within the same character. Um, Quite a few times, uh, so so I've been really lucky. But yeah, the the playing playing the pure bad guys are are always uh, just a little bit more fun. And I would have to say, Kevin as a director has been spectacular. My favorite note of Kevin's was the day he came over to me and said, "Listen, DB, um, that choice was absolutely terrible. You are a shitty actor, and I don't really know why you're doing this." But um, let's just come on, I said that five times. That's <laughs> He, I, my favorite director by far. So I think my, my best performance is in Kevin's uh, Kevin's uh, episode this season. I, I guarantee it. Those notes stuck, and I'm a better actor for it. And that's due to Mr. Alejandro. That's ah, awesome what he made me call friend. him. Mr. Thank you. So I think we, we, yeah. Thank you. We just need Kevin showing up at all of our workplaces or homes, telling us how bad we are. Uh, just shame us into being better. That's what we all. That's what we all need. Aaron, would you just shift your camera a little better? The angle's wrong. <laughs> just the, the lights off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, on that, like, we are we are running down on time. But uh, it's, I, I'm going to ask this because this is peculiar, and I was wondering this myself. Angela D wants to know. Uh, Trisha, what's the painting behind you? It it appears to be some sort of pig or something. It's a flying pig, and it says, bacon is out, kindness is in. And I bought it at a charity auction for a fundraiser for Mercy for Animals, which is a a charity focusing on um, better treatment for farm animals. So I've got a flying pig that helps save some farm animals. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. It's very cute, too. It is. Uh, and also, before we run out of time, I'm curious. So, again, because of this weird quarantine world, what would each of your characters be doing in quarantine? What would, How would they be passing the time? Would they be good mask wearers? What would they be up to? Uh, Amy, why don't you start? Uh, I think Ella would definitely be wearing a mask at all times and gloves even around the house. Um, she would role playing with herself and maybe, you know, her abuelita. And um, and she would probably be writing science fiction novels. Wait, Amy, they, they, they said Ella, not you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm too much, too much. <laughs> Uh, Trisha, how about you? And you can take this as uh, if, if goddess is on earth or if it's Charlotte, um, you know, what would your character be doing in quarantine? Uh, mom was on earth. Um, we, we knew what she liked. Yeah. Might have a martini in her hand and Dan in the, in, in, um, in the other hand. In the other hand, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think mom would, uh, I don't think mom would be so worried about a mask because she's kind of um, uh, safe that way, I think, in terms of her ability to not catch something like that. But who knows? She might, uh, you know, make it match her outfit and sort of like Nancy Pelosi does every time she's on, she it matches her outfit, which I think is cool. Um, and uh, yeah, but she, she would definitely have a martini and and, and um, be having some good old action. <laughs> uh, DB, how about you? What would a, a minute deal be doing? I kind of wonder, I do somewhat wonder with a situation like this, it's, I mean, it's, it's tragic, certainly, 
but being forced to stay at home isn't quite sexy enough for the work of hell, I don't think. I feel like, I don't know. But so from the the angel perspective, what would Aminadel be up to during pandemic and quarantine? Uh, laughing at puny humans. And uh, <laughs> um, but I think, you know, listen, he's, he's, he's the uh, number one helicopter parent, right? So. I think during the day he would just be hovering over Charlie, just trying to protect him by any means necessary. And then I think when he would put him down for naps, he would probably just be drinking a lot of yummy Cosmos, you know, just sticking to those uh, yummy Cosmos until his son got back up. And then he would be a big helicopter parent again. I just think he would be obsessed with his son uh, and, and protecting his son as, you know, most, most parents probably during this time um they probably are feeling that so, so i think that would be amanda dill's big thing uh would be to just protect protect his son which you're going to see a lot of in season five yeah i definitely don't see him hanging out on a lot of zoom conversations or um that doesn't really seem like his thing um and and uh no huh and uh, Kevin, how about uh, how about Dan? Would he be baking banana bread? Uh, no, Dan would not be baking banana bread unless it's paleo. Um, <laughs> Dan, you know what? I think Dan would be surfing. He'd be surfing. He would be teaching his daughter how to surf and teaching her that boys are bad unless they're like their dad, her dad. That rhymed. Can you see you making yeah. a t-shirt? Of course yeah. it's bad unless it's like your dad. Yeah. <laughs> That's really what Dan would be doing in quarantine. He'd be just making inspirational uh, <laughs> t-shirts, <laughs> just the iron on kind of deals. Today is your day, kid. <laughs> Hang in there, kitten. <laughs> exactly. uh, we are, we only have like about two minutes left. I do just want to get some you know, very quick words, brief words from you, just about the fans themselves. Uh, obviously, this show is a show that has survived and thrived through the power of fans. And it's it's a really impressive thing to witness. So just a final shout out to the fans and, and you know, talking about the, their support. Uh, Amy, I'll start with you again. Uh, yeah, just a quick shout out i always call you guys our little angels we literally would not be here without you guys thank you for raising money for charity that's awesome thank you for your amazing little drawings of the whole cast and um you know we're all we're all in this together so so thank you for weathering the ups and downs with us thanks db you want to go next yeah you know what? Listen, I would just say, uh, you know what? This is a this is a, a bizarre time, right? Um, it's it's this can be a really really dark time, and I know a lot of us are feeling that dark cloud hanging over us, especially here in the states. But I keep saying this to anyone who will listen. I think this is the time right now for us to go inside and learn the most about ourselves and how we can grow. This horrific time will end it will be over and so i think there's a lot that we could be learning about ourselves about each other about those those that we love and i would stress to anybody that's an that's an artist this is our time this is our time our incredible art is created during moments like this i cannot wait to see the essays the books the plays the screenplays the movies the television shows that are going that that are being created during this time, um, and I'm really excited about that. So I would just say to people, just keep taking care of yourself, wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands, and thank you so much for being there for us, uh, because you guys just keep bringing us back, and we are the little show that no one believed in. Um, you guys believed in us, and that's why we are here, and that's why we. Are looking forward to season five which drops in a few weeks and that's why we're looking forward to all of us getting back to work for season six thank you thank you and 
Trisha, as someone that's moved through a lot of fandom and has, you know, witnessed these things, uh, the growth of this of this genre and this show, what would you care to say? Um, you know, this just this came into my head. Uh, I agree with what everybody's been saying, and I just wanted to give a little. Um, I know the Lucy fans are a, a wonderful group and a close group and, and interactive with each other. And I heard the other day that um, the Lucy fans lost one of the original members um, that coined Lucy fans. Uh, I think Janet, if I'm correct, uh, was her name. And um, that was uh, one of the ones coining the term and, and a big mm -hmm. proponent of the show and a big proponent of not only you know, the, the Lucy fans, uh, fan interaction and getting the show picked up again and, and everything um, and lost her battle with cancer. So I just wanted to, you know, give a shout out to her and say that Charlotte is looking after her and um, to all of the rest of you that knew her via the internet or or your mutual support of the show, because I know it's uh, um, shocking to hear. And so I just give a little love to, uh, giving a little love to her and Charlotte's, Charlotte's taking care of her. Well spoken, and thank you. Wow. It's very sweet. So, um, and and Kevin, I'll I'll give you uh, the final word on just the fans and um, and your thoughts. You know, I want to just piggyback off of, uh, off of what everyone else is saying. Um, we are nothing without you, the fans. We exist because you allow us to exist, and because you support us in such a way that that. Uh, that makes us want to move forward. It makes us and inspires us to, to, to move forward. And to piggyback off of what DB is saying, you know, for all the artists that are out there, yes, this is our time to, to, to go within ourselves and discover ourselves, but don't get so brought down on that to put the unnecessary pressure on yourself to be brilliant, to come up with the next thought, to come up with the next big thing. This is solely a time for you, for us as humanity, as a people, to, to really figure out who we are as individuals so that when the world does open up again, that we're not brought down or chipped away by all the things that chipped away from us, away at us in the beginning. That we have, a, we have fresh eyes now. Uh, and so move forward with those fresh eyes. And I hope that everyone can do that. Um, and, and I love you and we love you and we appreciate you so much. And like I said, we are nothing without you. So thank you. Well said, thank you. And and I wanna thank all of you guys for being here and also all the fans for joining in this uh, Fan Expo HQ virtual experience. And again, remember your support has helped Feeding America and Food Banks Canada. Together we've raised like more than $9,000. So that's definitely a big round of applause. And, and look, the fun doesn't have to end here. We've had an awesome live stream but you still have the opportunity to get some autographs, some private video chats, some shout outs, all that good stuff. Just follow the link that's down there for that. And don't forget to tune in to the first half of season five on Netflix, August 21st of Lucifer. Super excited about that. And if you enjoyed this, we'll be back next week. For more, we're going to bring in some cast members from the show Smallville Thursday, July 30th at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can follow this link as well. I'm Aaron Sagers, and I want to thank uh, Trisha. Thank you for being here. Amy, thank you for being here. Kevin, thank you for being here. And DB, thank you for being here. I hope you guys had a great time. I know I did. This is a lot of fun, guys. And uh, round of applause. Thank you, guys. And, thank you, and guys. we are... And I think we're out, guys. <laughs>